short track takes a driver closer to the edge than the fine line and the finish line at Bristol. 153,000 fans here. All head break loose. It's very tough to get a ticket for Bristol. Jay Labonte takes the lead. Here comes Ernie. He hits Labonte. Labonte spins in turn two. The biggest names in the sport would love to win the night race at Bristol. A wild finish. Dale Earnhardt has grabbed his ninth win here at the Bristol Motor Speedway. We knew heading into Bristol that Rusty Wallace was strong. This is a place I've won nine times. My first race, it was something. But to come back and get my 50th win at the same racetrack, <laughs> oh, that was real cool. The walls of the racing world are closing in. There are two options, leave a loser or walk away a winner following in the footsteps of short track legends. For a racer, there is no option. Give me fuel, give me fire, give me double shot inside. TNT Sports presents the NASCAR Winston Cup Series Sharpie 500. It is the perfect combination of race and place. Short track, fast cars, bright lights on a Saturday night. It is the biggest word in short track racing, Bristol. Hi everybody, Bill Weber along with Benny Parsons on the TNT War Wagon right behind Pitt Road at Bristol and this the Bristol Motor Speedway is a short track with a long history of excitement. The pole winning speed here over 123 and a half miles per hour. That means if you live 15 miles from work, you could get there in about seven and a half minutes Monday morning. And please, no talking on the cell phone. On Tuesday, NASCAR released its findings. at the biggest little short track in racing, the Bristol Motor Speedway. 81 Winston Cup races at this track. 70 of them have been won by a guy starting in the top 10. And these fans have come from all across the country and all across the world, probably, just to get one of the toughest ticket in sports here to the night race at Bristol. Jeff Gordon, four wins here, but he's never won at night. Right next to him, Kevin Harvick, who won the Bush race last night, but had to move his teammate out of the way to do it. Bill Elliott, an all-time fan favorite who a few weeks ago removed himself from the battling for the most popular driver this season. Buckshot Jones in the field tonight. 43 cars all waiting to take the green flag. Dale Earnhardt Jr. waving to his fans on what has certainly been a difficult week for him. It is an amazing sight here at Bristol. They'll put over 150,000 fans in here. Some are in the suites, but they don't count. No. You, you gotta have a seat here. Because there needs to be more than one of these. It's a cliche, but if you build that, they will come. Guaranteed. Now, talking about racing here, you ready to go racing with Rusty Wallace here at Bristol? Benny has one here. Rusty's won here nine times through the miracle of computers. They're gonna go head to head here at Bristol Motor Speedway. All right. I'm racing with Rusty Wallace, powered by EA Sports, our Thunder Motion. That's me in the TNT car. Rusty Wallace right in front. Got to go down that, down next to the yellow line. That's right on the bottom. He's blocking you. I, Rusty, come on, look at it. Go down the inside so I can't get on the bottom of him. Let's try him. Well, maybe he'll drift up a little bit. Now, nail it on the gas. I couldn't quite make it. Oh, hit the you wall. Brushed up. the wall. Off turn four, I brushed the wall. But a lot of guys will do that tonight. That will be common tonight. Maybe I got in here. Come on, nail it. Oh, I just got a little bit ahead of me. But look how he goes down and blocks me every time I try. Now on the outside. That's not a favorite place to pass at Bristol. You see, you lose traction up there, Bill. You just can't get off the corner the way you need to. He got you right there, didn't he? Right at the end. The drivers will be looking to pass 500. And I'll tell you what, the drama began Thursday night when the boys rolled back into town.
TNT Sports welcomes you back to the Bristol Motor Speedway in Bristol, Tennessee, where tonight, 500 heart starting laps in the Sharpie 500. These fans are ready to go. Driver introductions continue, and we move closer to the green flag. And it really will be a green flag when they wave it tonight because Jeff Green's got his first NASCAR Winston Cup poll. Now, they say this is the toughest ticket in motorsports. If you tried to get one and couldn't, you could probably call it the toughest ticket in all of sports. What makes this real? Bill. Very well said, Liz. Bobby Allison was as tough as they come on the track, but off the track, they don't come much nicer. We all have many memories of the Allisons in the NASCAR Winston Cup Series. 500 laps here at Bristol tonight. That's 266 and a half miles. Don't miss the last half mile. welcomes you back to Bristol as our free race report continues leading up to the Sharpie 500. This is an evening that is electrified with excitement and I'm not talking about all the lights around the track. Race fans wait all year then they wait all day for this night and even with all the lights the drivers charge to the green flag without a shadow of doubt. On Friday the Bush series lit up Bristol. Kevin Harvick nudged his way into the front of the field and then raced to victory lane. Jeff Green finished second with his temper racing. And watch the two car go up, get in that left rear, just kind of push the 10 out of the way, take the spot and go on. Is that a congratulations or a curse you? I don't think that was a congratulations for the 10. Had to get a little aggressive with a few of them, but it's Bristol. And uh, you gotta do what you gotta do to win, right? He does what he has to do, and if he wins races, he wants to win races like that, that's fine. That's not Jeff Green. You know, I think I'll win more than not that way, and, and surely not piss a lot of people off like he did. You know, I don't know, I guess that's the way to win them now. I don't know, you know, it's good action for the fans, but I guess he'll be able to sleep all right tonight. Bristol is known for bent metal, bruised egos, and... Boy, Dave, that's the truth. Bristol has a history of hit and run racing. Recent history, not just last night, this was March of this year, closing laps. Jeff Gordon, Tony Stewart, what's going on there? And this is after the race, a little meeting on pit road. They both say it's water under the bridge, but Bristol drivers are like elephants. They never forget, Matt. And Tony Stewart climbing into his race car, buckling. Bill. Thanks, Matt. Coming up from the high banks of Bristol, when you look at Ray Evernham, you might be seeing red, but he's still seeing rainbows. The optimistic outlook and the ray of hope for Dodge next. Welcome back to Bristol. They opened the gates about 15 minutes ago, and, and watch these fans, how fast they can find their seat, and those guys working on pit road, it's, it's just incredible. You get a ticket here, you just gotta get to your seat as fast as you can. 150,000 fans, what a night it's gonna be. One guy that has a great seat tonight is Ray Evernham. He won. Things happen awful fast at Bristol. At Bristol. At Bristol. Just all the excitement, all the fans that are here uh, racing under the lights. It's uh, a special place. Special place. Special place. Special place. Rusty Wallace knows how to get around Bristol Speedway. Well, for some people, driving 500 laps here is a tough deal. But for me, I love every lap of it. This is a place I've won nine times and hope to win nine more. Terry Labonte takes the lead. This is uh, a good racetrack for us. We've run well here in the past. Uh, with the season that we've had, we're uh, you know, looking for uh, something to kind of turn our year around, and I think uh, Bristol could be the place to do it. It's those flash cameras flashing all night long, the sparks are flying, and just a pure drama. It's just incredible. Give me fuel, give me fire, give me seven, seven, seven. TNT Sports presents the NASCAR Winston Cup Series Sharpie 500. It's a backyard brawl on a Saturday night. It is the ticket too tough to get. The sun is setting, but the fever is rising. These fans are stargazing on a crystal clear summer evening, but they'll never even look at the sky because 43 stars are right below them. The NASCAR Winston Cup Series has come to Bristol, where you only need two things to win. Speed and greed. The total number of wins among the top four qualifiers for tonight's race.
Meeting when it broke up, they got set to start the chapel service for the drivers, and the preacher said, tonight's lesson is temper your temper. How many of those 43 guys you think are going to keep that in mind tonight? We are getting set for the Sharpie 500 at Bristol, pre-race ceremonies featuring the driver's children when we come back. TNT's coverage of the Sharpie 500 is brought to you by Sharpie Permanent Markers, asking race fans everywhere, how do you use your Sharpie? By the Home Depot, the official home improvement warehouse of NASCAR. By the Dew Crew, fueled by Dew. And by Budweiser, with a crisp, clean, refreshing taste you'll find in no other beer, this Bud's for you. One of the things that's become tradition at this race is the children of the drivers perform. Great group of people for the kids to have at the racetrack, Alan. The excitement continues to build as we're now less than five minutes from the command to start engines that'll get the Sharpie 500 underway here on TNT. Over a week ago to get their spot on the grounds for tonight's race. You know, the Rose Bowl holds 101,000 fans, Madison Square Garden a mere 20,000, but this stadium holds 150,000 people, and they're all revved up and ready to see one of racing's great spectacles. Just a couple of moments away from the command to fire engines, and let's talk about a critical, critical element that could determine who wins tonight, rate tonight's race. Pit strategy, more specifically, the spot you've been assigned on pit road determined by qualifying could determine the outcome. Alan, this is the only racetrack left with two pit roads. And only 21 good pit stalls on the front straightaway. And you said those are the first 21 qualifiers. Pace car goes by turn four. Drops the cars, these cars off. They make their pit stop and they're able to charge around the back stretch over to turn three. The pace car will go here to turn three and drop these guys off. These fellas have the advantage of running 60, 70, 80 miles per hour to get over to turn three. The pace car will run just 45 miles per hour between turns one and two. So that's the big advantage that the front stretch guys have. Four words will unleash 32,000 horsepower riders as the title sponsor of NASCAR's Pole Award program. Now the Walmart starting grid for tonight's Sharpie 500. Jeff Green and Mike Skinner making it at all. Richard Childress racing front row. First front row qualifying for Skinner since last year's California race. Ron Hornaday's best ever Winston Cup qualifying. Puts him in row two for the most recent Bristol winner, Elliot Sadler. Title contenders, Ricky Rudd and Jeff Gordon share row number three. Gordon, four Bristol wins, but none at night. And the third player in the title chase is right behind him in row four. Dale Jarrett, the 97 winner of this race, but Kevin Harvick won the Bush Series race here last night. Rusty Wallace and Todd Bodine in row five. Rusty, a nine-time winner here at Bristol. On the inside of row six is Kenny Schrader. Finished third the first concrete race here. On the outside, Jerry Nadeau. Back in row seven. Jeffrey Bodine is back in NASCAR West Cup racing, driving his brother Brent's car. Ward Burton on the outside. In row eight, Bobby Hamilton and Bobby Labonte, last year's West Cup champion. On the inside of row nine, Sterling Marlin, the winner last week in Michigan, and Tony Stewart. In row 10, on the inside, Robert Presley and Brent Bodine on the outside. Row number 11, Terry Labonte and Jeff Burton with differing fortunes in qualifying because Terry got the last front stretch pit stall. Burton and everybody else in the field had to go to the back. There's Dale Earnhardt Jr. on the outside of row 12. His best Bristol finishes at 21st. Kevin LePage and Kurt Busch back in row 13. Kurt's only finish here at Bristol was a 42nd in March. Mike Wallace and Dave Blaney in row 14. Blaney from 41st to 6th place last week at Michigan. John C. Johnny Benson finished second in the race here in the spring of 2000 from the back pits. He's got to come from there tonight along with Jeremy Mayfield. Mark Martin, a third place last August, his 15th Bristol top five, and Rick Mass makes his 350th Winston Cup start. A couple of rookie drivers sharing row 17. It's Andy Houston in one of his final rides in this car. Casey Atwood, whose 21st birthday is today. The 1988 Bristol winner, Bill Elliott, is back in row 18, along with Buckshot Jones, the last car to qualify on time. Now those who got in on a provisional, Steve Park has finished in the top 10 his last three Bristol races. He has a very fast race car after yesterday's final practice. He's got to come from row 19. Ricky Craven and Michael Waltrip in row 20. And the final three starters, Joe Nemechek, John Andretti, and Jason Leffler.
six drivers attempted to qualify for the race but were unable to be in the field. There you see the list. Kyle Petty, Hunt Strickland, Stacy Compton, the drivers who've been running every race on the series this year at Hertz. The last two races here at Bristol have featured 13 different caution periods. The first of them tonight has just happened at lap number 13 as Buckshot Jones got spun around in turn number two. And he has gone a lap down. Second caution of the Sharpie 500 at Bristol at lap 24. You're watching NASCAR on TNT. Jeff Green, the leader in some heavy lap traffic. Jeff Gordon, Ricky Rudd, the other top five trying to pick their way through as well. About going from the frying pan into the fire. Bristol to Darlington. The tough old lady in black tradition. We'll cover the pit stops when we come back to Bristol in a moment. Jeff Green's the leader. You're watching NASCAR on TNT. Stops in the Sharpie 500 for the leaders, but a couple of guys have stayed the fireworks have started early and often here at Bristol. We'll come back in a minute. Well, while uh, they continue to have all this carnage in the early going, we're trying to take advantage and get some commercials out of the way so that if they get to do some racing for a while, <laughs> we can watch. Steve Parks, the new leader. You're watching NASCAR on TNT. The Sharpie 500 is brought to you by Sharpie permanent markers asking race fans everywhere how do you use your Sharpie by the Home Depot the official home improvement warehouse of NASCAR the Dew Crew fueled by Dew and by Budweiser with the crisp clean refreshing taste you'll find in no other beer this Bud's for you already on the fifth caution of the Sharpie 500 and we just got to 100 laps how about it? You're watching NASCAR on TNT. So far here in Thunder Valley, six cautions in the first hundred laps of the Sharpie. Got a guess? Oh, about 18 or 19. You're very close. 20. Twice. Stay put. That's all. Let's take a break. Rusty Wallace and Jeff Gordon lead the Sharpie 5. Would have been the other lead lap cars that pitted under the last caution. Now we're on to the next caution. After all, we've run two laps. <laughs> Why would we not have a caution flag? Maybe we need to hire Casey Kasem to say the hits just keep on coming. We're back to Bristol in a minute on TNT. Coming up, going to be a lot of fun. August 28th, they kick off. What's going on right now? You know what the thing about Bristol is? There's no tunnel to get out. All those angry people when they're out of the race have to stay here till it's over. And there's some interesting discussions that happen, too. Impressive looking racetrack. Any weapon. We've just run 30 consecutive laps under the green flag. Will we make it to 41? That's the most straight green flag racing we've had tonight. We'll find out when we come back to Bristol. And person where they're standing in tonight's race. You see Steve Park and Stewart, and Jarrett, all running very well continue to pick their way around. Wallace and Gordon pacing the Sharpie 500 at Bristol. We're back in a minute on TNT. I'm and he's headed for the backstretch pit road. Got green flag pit stops coming up for the leaders in a moment so we'll take a break and come back for those. Jeff Gordon leads. You're watching NASCAR on TNT. And again in the Sharpie 500 at Bristol. In the back of the 15 car. <laughs> no. Mikey's behind the wall. It's been a rough and rugged night here at Bristol, but the fans are having a blast. Do two at a time, probably. Hold up. And Elliot's got some problems there that he will come to pit road and get attended to. Just past halfway here at Bristol in the Sharpie 500. 212 laps to go. Another critical round of pit stops coming up for the leaders. We're back to fun. But it is all good for Jeff Gordon right now. Keeps leading. He's going to overtake Rusty Wallace for most laps led tonight. We'll come back to Bristol in a minute. 500 NASCAR on TNT from... By the way. 
Rusty out in fourth position behind Jeff Gordon, Tony Stewart, and Kevin Harvick. You're watching NASCAR on TNT. In my mood, Hundred fifty thousand seat stadium for stock car racing and big time damage. So we'll take a break while we're under the caution here at Bristol. One hundred thirty two thirty six laps to go. Been trading sheet metal the last couple of laps around. Johnny's involved in a crash. It's been filled with mayhem best way to describe it. 15 caution flags. 81 of the 383 laps so far have been run behind the pace car. The hits came early. The hits came often. Rick Mask, Ricky Craven, Bill Elliott. And that's the most recent caution. Johnny Benson hitting the wall on the outside first in turn one and then the inside wall. Got back at it. That's good news. 15th caution of the Sharpie 500 is out. It is closed, so we'll take the break here. Come back, see if any of the front runners come in for new tires. Tonight. Tempers, tempers. We talked about it a few hours ago. They're starting to boil here in Bristol. It's a bit more. 74 laps to go in the Sharpie 500 at Bristol. Jeff Gordon in search of the victory. 39 laps to go in the Sharpie 500. Which one's going to win, Stewart, Harvick, or Gordon? Yeah, Ricky needed something positive to happen. Unfortunately for him, as we look at the finishing results, he still finished behind Jeff Gordon. Tony Stewart, third win of the year. Kevin Harvick came within a position to make it at the Bristol Double. A first and a second on the weekend, though. I think I'd take that. See, 15 cars in the lead lap. Jeff Burton being the last one. Just two cars, one lap down. Jeremy Mayfield, Casey Atwood. Good run for Kevin LePage. Much needed for the Kodak team. That 13th place finish. All these guys involved in all the mayhem that happened throughout the night. 16 caution flags for 92 laps. Slowed the Sharpie 500. A lot of guys wound up the night. Wrecked race cars back in the garage area watching the finish. We'll take a break. We'll come back with more post-race coverage in just a minute. From Thunder Valley, you're watching NASCAR on TNT. Steve Park finishing seventh tonight behind Tony Stewart, the winner of the Sharpie 500. More interviews with more drivers next. And Jeff Gordon finishes third, Alan. And as we check the championship standings now, Jeff Gordon gaining 10 points tonight on Ricky Rudd and 25 on Dale Jarrett. And the season winding down, we head into that fall stretch run, 12 races to go. Gordon with a very large 308-point lead in pursuit of a fourth NASCAR Winston Cup championship. Rest of the top 20 in the title and position changes on the night tonight. Johnny Benson goes from ninth to 11th, losing two spots after his crash done in turn one. More post-race coverage in a minute. Fans beginning to file out of the Bristol NASCAR Winston Cup Championship. We'll look ahead to Darlington in a moment. You're watching NASCAR on TNT. Back in Thunder Valley, Dale. Darlington Raceway. Alan? That is next weekend. Traditional Labor Day weekend stop for oh, the NASCAR I Winston Cup Series. Love Darlington. Just love going down there. It's hot, it's slick, and it's a real challenge for these drivers and teams to run 500 miles. The Mountain Dew Southern 500 capping off our coverage next Sunday at 12.30 Eastern Time on TNT. It's going to be a great weekend at the Southern 500, and we hope you'll be with us for every minute of the action. The Sharpie 500 is brought to you by Sharpie Permanent Markers. Asking race fans everywhere, how do you use your Sharpie? By Miller Lite. Want a great taste that's less filling? Grab a Miller Lite. It's Miller time. By Applebee's Neighborhood Grill and Bar. Eating good in the neighborhood. Applebee's. And by Wrangler. Real, comfortable jeans. 
We've heard from nine of the top ten finishers in tonight's Sharpie 500 in our post-race coverage. Let's round out the group. Here's Dave Burns. And that's it. You've heard from all the top ten finishers in tonight's race. Tony Stewart in victory lane. And next week, it's on to Darlington. Don't forget, if you missed any of the action, want to catch it again, our NASCAR at Night Encore on TNT, Monday at 11 p.m. Eastern and Pacific. Our Darlington coverage on TNT, Saturday, the NASCAR Bush Series race presented by Applebee's at 1 Eastern time, followed by Happy Hour. And then next Sunday, the Mountain Dew Southern 500, 1230 Eastern time, Darlington. Be there on TNT. The Untouchables coming up next on both the East and West Coasts. What a wild night it was here in Bristol. Thunder Valley living up to its reputation. 16 caution flags for 92 laps. Looked like a war zone in the garage with all the torn up equipment at the end of the night. Tempers flaring. They were out of control. In the end, Tony Stewart using a long run to get around Jeff Gordon to score the victory. They were beating him up fast.